Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 40. Come, ye disconsolate, where'er ye languish. Here health and peace are found, life, truth, and love. Here bring your wounded hearts. Here tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrow, but love can remove. Hymn number 40. Scriptural will be given by Dale from Virginia. John, Jesus saith, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. 
This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 422. Grace for today, O love divine, thee to obey and love alone. Losing the mortal will in thine, find we a joy before unknown. Hymn number 422.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. As always, we begin our Sunday services here at 10 a.m. with our round table discussion. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please be sure to get it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you can also find it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children every Sunday at 11 a.m. And that Sunday school is available for children anywhere in the world. It has its own teleconference number. So if you don't live in the area and you have a child of Sunday school age, please call us. We'll give you the number and be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 815 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery for infants and toddlers for, at all of our services. And we've been printing again. The for, latest forum highlights has been printed and mailed and that uh, to subscribers. So you should be getting them very shortly. And there's a new, another article that has recently been featured on our website that I would like to point out. And that, um, an article by Peter V. Ross entitled, The Simplicity of Metaphysical Practice. Christian science is not complicated. <laughs> this is a very good article by Peter V. Ross. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony from miscellaneous writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Karen from California. Page 403. A student of Christian science was employed in the Massachusetts State Prison at Charleston to teach the prisoners to make shoes. He carried his copy of Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and the journal with him. And as he had the opportunity, would tell the men what this wonderful truth could do for them, setting them free in a larger and higher sense than they had dreamed of. We make extracts from a number of letters that one of the prisoners has written to those who are interesting themselves in this work. Editor of the Christian Science Journal. At the prison once a week, there are Christian papers given to the inmates, but none of those papers point out so clearly the fallibility of the mortal or carnal mind and the infallibility of the divine mind, as does the teaching of Christian science. I was strangely blind and stupid. I loved sin, and it seemed as though I never would be able to forsake it. I did everything that would be expected of one entirely ignorant of God. I also had a complication of diseases. I could not begin to describe the medicines I have taken. I no longer look for material treatment, but humbly seek for the divine assistance of Jesus through the way Christian science has taught me. I am indeed an altered man. I now have no more doubt of the way of salvation than I have of the way to the prison workshop. I am very grateful to the students of Christian Science for the interest they have taken in me and my fellow prisoners. Their letters and books have been of great profit, and in accordance with their wish, I have done what I could for the others. I gave the journal to every man who would accept it, 
and related my experience to those who would listen. I told them they need go no farther than myself to see what the demonstration was. For not only have my eyes been healed, but many other ailments have disappeared. Some of the fellows told me I was becoming religiously insane. But acting upon your advice, I did not stop to argue with those opposed. And I am glad to be able to tell you that those who expressed interest were more than those who opposed. The chaplain told me I could keep science and health until I got through with it. I never should get through with that book. But as others were waiting for it, I did not like to keep it too long. God bless the author. I need have no fear after leaving here. I feel that I can make an honest living. I can honestly add that my bad reputation is largely due to my lack of education. What little I do know, I learned here and in the House of Correction. I tell you this for I feel that I must be honest with the kind friends who have done so much for me. Providing I should not be paroled, I shall remain here until the 24th of next December. God bless you all. J.C. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 10 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, love. The golden text is from 1 John and John. God is love. Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. The responsive reading, Luke. I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Florence will now read. The Bible, Psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Isaiah. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked 
before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go, and say unto Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend the city. Matthew And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. John Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taking an adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus took down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Luke. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you? Having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it. 
And when he had found it, he layeth it upon his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Hebrews Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Day Day from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. God is love. Love is impartial and universal in its adaptation and bestowal. It is the open fount which cries, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. The Old Testament assigns to the angels God's divine messages, different offices. Michael's characteristic is spiritual strength. He leads the host of heaven against the power of sin, Satan, and fights the holy wars. Gabriel has the more quiet task of imparting a sense of the ever-presence of ministering love. These angels deliver us from the depth. Truth and love come nearer in the hour of woe when strong faith or spiritual strength wrestles and prevails through the understanding of God. The Gabriel of his presence has no contest. To infinite ever-present love, all is love, and there is no error, no sin, sickness, nor death. Against love the dragon wars not long, for he is killed by the divine principle. Truth and love prevail against the dragon because the dragon cannot war with them. Thus endeth the conflict between the flesh and spirit. Love for God and man is the true incentive in both healing and teaching. Love inspires, illumines, designates, and leads the way. Right motives give pinions to thought and strength and freedom to speech and action. Jesus aided in reconciling man to God by giving man a truer sense of love, the divine principle of Jesus' teaching, and this truer sense of love redeems man from the law of matter, sin, and death by the law of spirit, the law of divine love. The man of sorrows best understood the nothingness of material life and intelligence and the mighty actuality of all-inclusive God, good. These were the two cardinal points of mind healing, or Christian science, which armed him with love. From Puritan parents, the discoverer of Christian science early received her religious education. In childhood, she often listened with joy to these words falling from the lips of her saintly mother. God is able to raise you up 
from sickness. And she pondered the meaning of that scripture she so often quotes. And these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Jesus spares us not one individual experience if we follow his commands faithfully. And all have the cup of sorrowful effort to drink in proportion to their demonstration of his love. Till all are redeemed through divine love. Jesus' teaching and practice of truth involves such a sacrifice as makes us admit its principle to be love. This was the precious import of our master's sinless career and of his demonstration of power over death. He proved by his deeds that Christian science destroys sickness, sin, and death. If the scientist reaches his patient through divine love, the healing work will be accomplished at one visit, and the disease will vanish into its native nothingness like dew before the morning sunrise. The physician who lacks sympathy for his fellow being is deficient in human affection, and we have the apostolic warrant for asking, he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Not having this spiritual affection, the physician lacks faith in the divine mind and has not that recognition of infinite love which alone confers the healing power. Such so-called scientists will strain out gnats while they swallow the camels of bigoted pedantry. The tender word and Christian encouragement of an invalid, pitiful patience with his fears and the removal of them, are better than hecatombs of gushing theories, stereotyped borrowed speeches, and the doling of arguments, which are but so many parodies on legitimate Christian science, aflame with divine love. Love is enthroned. That evil or matter has neither intelligence nor power is the doctrine of absolute Christian science. And this is the great truth which strips all disguise from error. For true happiness, man must harmonize with his principle, divine love. The son must be in accord with the father, in conformity with Christ. According to divine science, man is in a degree as perfect as the mind that forms him. The truth of being makes man harmonious and immortal, while error is mortal and discordant. Millions of unprejudiced minds, simple seekers for truth, weary wanderers athirst in the desert, are waiting and watching for rest and drink. Give them a cup of cold water in Christ's name and never fear the consequences. Love enriches the nature, enlarging, purifying, and elevating it. The wintry blasts of earth may uproot the flowers of affection and scatter them to the wind. But this severance of fleshly ties serves to unite thought more closely to God. For love supports the struggling heart until it ceases to sigh over the world and begins to unfold its wings for heaven. In the following psalm, one word shows, though faintly, the light which Christian science throws on the scriptures by substituting for the corporeal sense the incorporeal, or spiritual sense of deity. Psalm 23. Divine love is my shepherd. I shall not want. Love maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Love leadeth me beside the still waters. Love restoreth my soul. Spiritual sense. 
Love leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for love is with me. Love's rod and love's staff, they comfort me. Love prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Love anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house, the consciousness of love forever. Love never loses sight of loveliness. Let's all now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's all sing hymn number 32. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, neath which our spirits blend like brother birds that soar and sing and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love. Hymn number 32.
Let's all sing hymn number 374. We thank thee and we bless thee, O Father of us all, that even before we ask thee, thou hearest thy children's call. We praise thee for thy goodness and tender, constant care. We thank thee, Father, Mother, that thou hast heard our prayer. Hymn number 374. Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God? Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 
And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Amen. <laughs> 